What's up guys? Welcome to Liar's Music Channel where we discuss music production and songwriting. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. All right, so today I'm going to dig into a song I produced about a year ago. Um, I think it's very much in the style of Ariana Grande, Kalani, like that kind of pop R&B thing. It's a really fun song called New Bitch by this new artist called Kuja. You guys can check it out, I have a link below. Uh, I'm just going to jump straight into the song, play a little bit of the chorus, and then we're gonna go over different parts and discuss how to create this type of track, like what makes for this genre as far as production elements. So let's go. Yeah, cause I'm a new bitch. Who this? So it's a really, really fun song. Um, a lot of just like sassiness going on. So first of all, it starts out pretty like mildly. This is the intro. So, you know, a lot of vinyl is, is like a throwback for this genre because I think a lot of the times in hip hop, they were using breaks. So there was vinyl on the records that they were sampling. So that's kind of like historically where it comes from. I really love the so sound of vinyl. I think it sounds organic and like really pretty and beautiful. So I use it a lot, even just for effects. But right here, it's just like this vinyl loop just for the intro. And also I have um, these, I guess they're plugs. Uh, Yeah, you can see I made these with Diva, which is a really cool plugin uh, for synths and just, just a lot of very different sounds. Um, yeah, you know, I, I did print it down, so I can't show you guys like exactly what it was, but um, it's a, it's just, it's kind of like detuned. I think I probably uh, kind of took away some of the higher frequencies of the sound too, to make it a little bit like duller, older sounding. Mascara too expensive to grow over you, so I... Oh, here, I have these clips right here. Oh, yeah, I know it's... Yeah, okay, so what this is, is actually a one-shot that I dragged from I Imagine Splice just for, by, like, the file name. So, yeah, it's just uh, something that I heard, like, a blip, like a one-shot that I thought might be really cool to use. So I'm using Sampler and Ableton to create the sound. You know, and there's a, a few things on here, like Pancake is a panning plugin. It's, it's super low, 18%. That's, like, pretty much nothing. So, uh, yeah, you know, this is mostly, like, I found a sound I liked, and there it is. I just plopped it in. So that's a really good thing to do. What I do is a lot of the times I look for one shots just in the key of C because they're really, really easy to plop in because samplers are usually set to like C3. So if you get like a nice key of C plug or whatever, any kind of sample, you just pop it in and you can hear what it sounds like. So it's pretty cool. So there's a bit of a hat going on right here. So you can see what I did here. Um, it sounds, it looks like I played it in just by file name uh, and I printed it down. So there's isotope vinyl on this. If you guys watch my videos, you know I love this plugin. It just makes everything sound a little bit older and I'm not using really any of the controls except the year on here. I made the year 1960, which is not too like dull and EQ'd, but it does have a little bit of that vintage quality, which I really like. And then one thing that you will really hear uh, right here is that I detuned um, the second hit of the had seven semitones, so that's cool because it just kind of gives it like a tuku tuku teka tuku teka. It gives it pitch. It gives it like movement. Yeah. So, and then one of the things I have to point out here on the verse too, because it is extremely sparse, uh, the vocals are a really big deal. Obviously, she's got a really great voice, uh, but we're also emphasizing it with like a little bit of. Um, they're not necessarily harmonic saps. I think they're just doubles and octaves. <laughs> You know, we got an octave and we got double, and there's two of them and they're panned left and right. So it creates like, and there's a lot of reverb obviously on the, I'm guessing it's probably like, oh, I'm actually bussing out to verb. Um, I can see right here. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to my main uh, like plate verb, which is just like a Valhalla that I've got on a bus. So really nice way to save CPU. I don't usually do that. If you guys <laughs> watch my videos, I pile on effects because I have this like custom made computer and it can take a lot of abuse. Not as much abuse as I, as I said its way, but it does take a lot. So yeah, let's hop, uh, hop further over here. Uh, 
just let them sit and watch Watch me as I fuck it up And they try to swing that to me Okay, yeah, so the a lot of this music, all right, like a lot of this, let's just call it Ariana Grande type music, uh, pop R&B, like this trap based pop, a lot of it is loop based, right? We're not really changing chords too much uh, most of the time. So a lot of it has to do with dynamics. So I have this first, which is really sparse hat vocals and that little plug thing. Here the drums come in. I think the bass comes in as well, the 808. I'm, I might be lying. We'll see. Um, but it's a lot of stuff that comes in just on the second half of the verse. And then when you hear the pre, you will see that everything pulls back and becomes a lot more legato there's just a lot, a lot of like ephemeral ethereal kind of sounds coming in and that's very conscious choice <laughs> on my part because it creates a lot of like oh we're here over oh, here dynamics yeah so we got you know we got a stack of snares i do this a lot um claps and snares i just kind of position them without thinking too much just however like it feels good to me, you know, if I'm like, oh, I like the snare, but I just need a little bit more of an organic quality. Like I'll find, go ahead and find an uh, acoustic snare, just layer it really softly underneath it or clap or something. Oh, okay, there's a little bit like, Ta yeah, I didn't even know that was happening. Just a little bit of rhythmic variation right here. Uh, we've got a little fun little fill here. How did I make this? Let's see. Oh, it's beatbox. That's so fun. Honestly, like I probably would have like turned this up in the mix because this is fun. God. Yeah, it's nice. I really like a lot of fills that are made of unusual things like foley or something, not just like, you know, snares and toms and stuff. So I think it's pretty fun. I got these little, I think it's just a, I can't do it. <laughs> Like a mouth pop <laughs> but it's I, it sounds like it's really pitched up quite a bit maybe i've pitched it up before or um uh, okay yeah i see this was just like yeah if i take the verb off yeah they're just clicks that's what they are and putting verb on it makes them sound a lot more like organic so i don't know now you knock me down just put me and you can see what I did here is I straight up used um, a sample from Splice. I'm guessing this might've been a sample that this song was built from. This has been a year, so I don't remember. But yeah, so I'm saying, I don't do this very often anymore. Most of the times I like to like start with chords I play or even like make samples myself because I just don't want it, stuff to like sound reminiscent of anything else somebody might've made using Splice. Uh, but this one does have like a pretty good uh, featured Splice loop. I see what I did to make it a little bit different is uh, I put Tremolator on it because it didn't have the tremolo before. Oh yeah, and then I also, I'm pretty sure I wrote in that really true, that like um, transposition, transposition sweep. So what it does, it drops down and it goes above right here. Uh. Yeah, so a lot of the times, like if you're gonna use a sample that is from Slice, which means anybody else can use it in their song too, you wanna make it like kind of different. Here, oh, here, see, I'm also, really EQing it. I'm really curious to hear this like without this stuff now. Yeah, so it sounds quite different. So with the things I did, it's a little bit more like acceptable that I used a splice loop as a featured instrument. So there's a little bit of like a splash right here. Uh, I really love these like soft, I call them soft impacts. I think an impact traditionally is something that goes, it's like an explosion, but my impact, my soft impacts are usually like a clap with a verb on. It's just like little transitions that are, you know, just help with the energy, but nothing too severe. <laughs> yeah, and there's a nice double on these vocals. That's very uh, verby too, so the lead can stay drier and more easily discerned in the middle. Yeah, oh, Ariana, yeah, I think this is like right when that was um, all those songs, you know, like um, Seven Rings or whatever, like they were just coming out. So it's like, yeah, do the yeah. <laughs> just fun. Okay, so I see one of the things I have here. There's a lot of vocals, obviously, from Koja uh, that we've recorded. There's harmonies. There's, uh, I think there's a, like, kind of a different, interesting stack of doubles. There's, like, ones that are sung hard. There's ones that are self um, sung a little bit softer. I'm going to look at this in a second. But I also noticed that there's a sample that's just like, do, do, do. Let me try that again. And at least edit that right. <laughs> Nine, do, do. 
Yeah, there's um, right here. <laughs> and there's a bit of a whoop, like a little sweep from the note before uh, under it. So um, I just, I think, I don't know how I came across the sample, but I just really felt like it would make like a nice little vocal addition to what she was doing. Okay, I see what I did with this. So I took like a regular organ sound, which is also again, like a nod to traditional R&B production because there's a lot of live organ used in that music, like B3s. Um, so I layered it doing the exact same melody as that main pluck from the verse. And what I did also is I obviously, I took the main plug and I upped the octave as well. So they are covering, you know, a lot of ground now. Um, these like kind of bell type things are very popular in this type of music. I use this a lot. Actually, I use bells a lot in like all kinds of pop music because it's just such a high, high, high pitch. A lot of the times if you process them right, they are also like very pleasing, like twinkly. They sound nice. They kind of bring up like almost like childhood kind of feelings of like, ooh, like magical twinkle, right? Like see, I think a lot, <laughs> I think a lot about like how the sounds affect the brain because I like, really am interested in the psychology. So um, yeah, to me, something like that, it just creates like that tiny little moment of magic. Plus it covers that upper spectrum, you know, of the uh, upper end of the EQ spectrum, uh, where you don't normally have pitched instruments, you usually have like hats or effects or something. Okay, so I got this bass plug, which is really cool. I also see this was a one shot. So I, I don't usually do that. I usually use bass from like a sub lab or something. Um, and I see right here. Oh, okay, I've got like a, basically distortion just like a synth with yeah just a lot of crap on it <laughs> it just sounds it's this is really like an old trick i've heard a lot of producers in the 2000s use you know just putting a lot of distortion and kind of low in the mix because it creates a feeling of power that distortion is like a, it's like an electric guitar you know doing a power chord that's what like it reminds your brain of so I've got an 808 here. I think this is from Contact. This is before, yeah. This is before I discovered Sublab and just completely started cheating on this plugin, True Urban, with Sublab and I never really sw switched back. Like Sublab has my love now, but this is something I used a year ago. This is a really great contact library for uh, 808s if you prefer to use Contact for that. So then I got my hats, the same as we're in the, uh, in the verse, and I got the same like kicks and splash uh, and snare stacks as well. And I've got a little bit of like, hey, you know, it's just, it creates a little bit of energy. And I got more bells too. Okay, sweet. It's actually funny what this little bell adds. It's kind of like, you wouldn't know that something so small would just like really fill this track in. Yeah. I, know, I got a lot on it too, just like panning. I don't know why I have pancake twice. You know, sometimes I just like jump around so much in a session that <laughs> I'll just add something twice, but you know, we forgive ourselves. I want to look at the, uh, the vocals here for a second because I think her vocals are pretty interestingly done on this chorus and post. No bitch. Who this? So obviously we have the low vocals there. I uh, shouldn't sing the no bitch who this. It's kind of low, you know. Um, so it's programmed, processed. Just her voice pitch dropped and we've got this right here. No bitch. Yeah, I think I just wanted her to kind of aggressively, a little bit more like eh, sing it because her voice is very soft and got a lot of air. It's really pretty. Uh, and I do have like the pretty doubles. No, bitch. Yeah. So, and I think I heard it at that point and was like, mm, I need something more as first power here. Just kind of sing them a little bit more like eh, tongue out, like very aggressively. So, and that a lot of the times, like what I call this is building the texture of the vocal. You just kind of listen as you build up the layers and you're like, what does it need? You know, sometimes you might find that it needs like very interesting things. You might need uh, all the people in the room, you know, if you've got writers and stuff to just like start singing gangs. Sometimes you might need the artist to do something weird, like maybe like, no bitch, like some kind of fry track. Yeah, there's a lot you can do for building your textures for sure. With no 
done. Just looking at this. With new nails, new purse, new bitch, do work. Yeah, we've got a lot of doubling going on here. No, 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 bitch. There's tremolo going on, I think, just on the doubles. And then there's none going on on the middle. So you can still hear the word new, 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 new. And then it's like kind of shaking in the sides. It creates a cool effect. And then we've got this vocal right here too. I think all this is is just a pitched up vocal. I actually think this might be me. I'm curious. Is this me or is this her? No, that's her. That's for sure her. A lot of the times I end up doing these like kind of vocals as an instrument parts. So yeah, we just kind of you know recorded her doing that and i pitched it up just so it, it can have that floating thing like again add something different adds energy okay so something like this again this is a question of dynamics what this part shows us is again a dynamic choice because we just came from this chorus that's got you know the hat it's got the long 808, the whole notes. So, and to go to something like this, you know, we mostly have this kick. Yeah, there's, you know, vocals, there's verbs, like there's things floating around, but mostly it's vocal in this kick and the snare. And it creates a nice break for the ear to where you can just go straight back into the thing after that, like the full feel of the track. Yeah, and you can see like I'm adding some things that we didn't have before, like these toms that are just pitched really high and they're just like so tinny and like it's kind of cute, you know? Uh, yeah, and basically a lot of it, uh, a lot of my production, like I determine in the verse and the chorus, um, the first verse, first chorus and first pre. Then as I fly it to the next sessions sections, I just basically take some things out or add like one instrument or two instruments because it is pop music. So a lot of the times you don't want to change it too much because the ear again, like expects the thing it just got used to. So you know, most cases, sometimes you want to flip things and just like freak people out because that's fun to do and it fits the song. But for this song, this made more sense to me. So this is the bridge. It's very similar to that break part that I played, except it's got that 808. Um, so yeah, immediately the feel just goes straight to like kick an 808. You know, we're just vibing at this point. Like we want to hear the low end. Like the low end makes us feel all like sassy and sexy. So that's the whole point of that part is just like to bring in the sass because also like lyrically what she's saying is like this is how bitch go bad like it's very very sassy so that low end focus really brings that up yeah and then we just basically go back to the chorus there's a little bit more ad libs and shouts you know a lot of things like that and i process it with like vinyl and valhalla which you guys like if you watch me like you know like this is my plugin <laughs> this is for sure my plugin um yeah so you know and we're basically yeah that, that's basically it <laughs> so i hope you guys enjoyed this please let me know if you have any questions i know i go really fast i know i kind of zip through sessions so do let me know if you saw something where you're like hey what's that plug in or what was done there i'm always happy to talk about it yeah and please uh like this video please subscribe and i will see you guys next time yeah,